What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Q&A session here on my YouTube channel. First off, how do you get a question answered on one of my Q&As or in my vlog? It's simple. Make sure you're following me on social media. You can tweet me your question anytime or when I post a picture on Instagram directly asking for questions, fire them in there and let's get started. Uh, but first off, I'm sitting in the Indianapolis airport headed to Atlanta for the Tier Pro Series meet right now. I've got about 20 minutes before I get on this flight, so I'll bang out as many questions as I can. Bethany West asks, what do you enjoy about swimming? Well, there's too many things. I could do a whole entire video based on that question, but um, the, the biggest thing is, is the friendships and um, the relationships that I've developed over the years through the sport of swimming, you know, with my coaches and with my teammates and with friends that I've met. Maggie asks, what's the best way to get faster if you are short? Simplest and easiest answer, and I'm dead serious, get better at underwater kicking. If you're a butterfly or backstroker or freestyle, it doesn't matter how big you are, if you if you have really good underwater kicks, you will immediately beat people who are much larger than you. One of the best underwater kickers I've ever seen was a girl by the name of Gia D'Alessandro who graduated from Indiana a few years ago. She ended up going 50 point low on a relay split in the 100 yard fly, and this girl was like 5'2". She was tiny, I mean really short. She might not have even been that tall, but her underwater kicks were incredible. So if you're a backstroke, freestyle, or butterfly, or work on your underwater kicks, those underwaters, those turns, that is the easiest way to beat people. Doesn't matter how big you are. You can kick really fast, you can beat people. Um, if you're a breaststroker, work on your pullout. You don't have to be huge to have a phenomenal pullout, okay? Um, there are a lot of really good smaller breaststrokers in the world that have massive pullouts because they're strong and powerful. That's my advice. Kira Rose asks, how much longer do you think you'll be swimming? Um, eh, I'll probably swim my whole life, but competitively, I don't know, another four or five years maybe? We'll see. One year at a time. Everyone keeps asking me, are you going to go through 2020? Are you going to go through 2024? I just try to take it one season at a time, one meet at a time, and don't overthink things too much, right? Like, you can't plan more than a year in advance in just about anything. So I try not to think that far into the future. Alejandro asks, are you a kicker or a puller? When I was younger, I was a far better kicker. I wasn't very good at pulling, especially breaststroke. Um, as I've gotten older, I've become a much better breaststroke puller. I would say when it comes to breaststroke specifically, I'm, I'm I'm about even. I'm good at kick and I'm good at pull. It's about 50-50. Um, but for other strokes like freestyle and backstroke, I'm definitely a better kicker, not a good puller. One piece of advice, don't shy away from one of your weaknesses. So if you're a horrible kicker, work on your kick. Get better at it. That's the, e the easiest thing to do in swimming in your stroke is to improve on your weaknesses. So if you're a really good puller, great. Get better at kicking and vice versa. Joel Cummings asks, what is your favorite pool? Mine is IUPUI in Indy. I just swam there this weekend. I love Love that pool. That's one of my school's pools. Easily one of the best pools in the world. Um, some of the fastest swims in the world have taken place at that pool. For me, it would probably be, you know, when they host Olympic trials in Omaha and they build out a pool in the Q West Center or whatever that facility is called that seats like 18,000 people. I love that pool. I also love the Irvine pool out in California. Um, I grew up racing in that pool. I love that pool. Um, but yeah, I would have to. I would have to say Omaha when they host trials. There's nothing like that experience. Swim Fast Daily asks Kidoba or Chipotle. I like Chipotle. I'm in the rare minority group that actually really likes the new Chipotle queso. I actually think it's really good. Most people don't think it's very good, probably because it's made of healthier or real cheese. I actually quite like it. Alex asks, what are the best and worst parts of being a competitive swimmer? Great question. The best part, um, I get to do what I love. You know, I get to train as a living. I get to do this as my job and it's awesome. And I get to travel the world and I get to go to, go to really cool places. And I get to have a lot of really cool experiences. Um, the downside is I have to sacrifice a lot, right? Like I have to give up a lot. There are a lot of things that I can't do. You know, outside of traveling for competition and for training, I don't get to do other things. Like I don't get to go on vacation just to take vacation. I don't get to take breaks just to take breaks. Um, you know, I'm, I'm missing my family's uh, uh, family vacation here in the next couple months because I have to train. So along with those really cool things I get to do, there's a lot of sacrifices and it's hard. Grace Love asks, what advice would you give to a swimmer who is done with their season but doesn't want to lose speed or wants to get even faster by themselves? 
continue training. I say this all the time. This is like a model that I live by. If you outwork your competition, you will you will outperform them one day, right? The old saying goes, you know, um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So if you're in your off season, just make sure you continue to train. Work out every day. You don't have to overdo it, but be consistent. That's the biggest piece of advice I can give you. If you're consistent, you will continually make gains. Because if you're in your off season, the odds are the people you're, you're racing against are also in their off season. If you're working when they're not, you're getting better and they're not, and that's a fact. Be consistent. Katie asks, how excited are you for the Hoosiers to kill it at, at NC's? They are going to crush NC's. I am very, very excited for both the men's and the women's team, particularly our medley relays on both the women's and the men's side. Both have shots at winning. Both are ridiculously good. Um, it's an exciting time to be on my team right now. Jack asks, how much distance did you swim in high school? Um, I did like eight to nine swim workouts a week in high school, probably around 60,000 meters a week of training, I would guess. I'm actually going to a meet right now to meet my club coach who trained me for 10 years prior to me being in college and I'll ask him like, hey, like what was our, because back then I didn't track things, right? I didn't, I didn't follow how many yards I was swimming in high school. I just swam, I didn't do it. But I'll ask him and I'll get back to you on that. Nowadays I track everything, right? I log all my workouts, I log the yards, I log the sets. So I could tell you all those things in the last few years. But when I was in high school, eh, I'll get back to you. Tyler asks, what do you pack for a swim meet? Which is a great question because I'm headed to a swim meet right now. So with me right now, I have my swim bag. And in this bag, I've got um, a couple practice suits, right? Some regular tier practice suits. Um, I've got a, an Evictor racing suit in that bag. I've got two sets of goggles, my racing goggles and my training goggles. Um, I've got some food. I've got lots of snacks, right? Lots of good snacks. Let's see, what do I have for snacks in here? I've got... Um, oh yeah, I talked about this in my vlog the other day, the pure Elizabeth granola. I really like this granola. I've got some fruit, um, and then also like I carry on my electronics, like my laptop. I've got my Nintendo Switch, I've got my iPad, I've got my headphones, um, all that stuff. Everything else I check, right? Like my foam roller I checked, um, my stretch cords that I bring to a I bring stretch cords. Um, I bring my peanut, which is another tool that I'll show you in a bit. Um, I'll do a more in-depth video on this. I'll do that in the vlog. I'll like, go over everything that I bring to me. How about that? I'll do that. I get this question all the time. What songs do you listen to before a race? My favorite artist is Eminem. He pumps me up more than anything, so I listen to a lot of Eminem. But my favorite Spotify station right now is 2000s punk rock, or rock, because that was when I was like a young teenager listening to a lot of music. You know, That's the genre that I'm loving right now. It really pumped me up. The song Headstrong by the band Trapped. Oh, that's, that song will get you going. Noah asks, who are you sponsored by? I'll actually probably do a whole video like explaining all the different sponsorships that I have because I get a lot of people asking me those kind of questions, so I'll do that. Okay, this will be the last question of the day because it looks like my plane is about to board, but J-Law asks, what swimmer inspired you? A lot of swimmers have inspired me. When I was young, just like a lot of you guys, I idolized Michael Phelps. I grew up watching him in the Olympics, and it was a dream of mine to meet him one day and swim with him one day, and the fact that I was able to go to the Olympics and be on a relay and win a medal with him was a dream come true. But I was inspired by tons of swimmers, you know, by guys like Aaron Pearsall, by guys like Brennan Hansen, all those famous Olympians that, that I grew up watching. But at the same time, I'm equally as inspired by people who do things that aren't expected of them. I did, my last vlog was about my teammate Levi Brock. He's a guy no one ever heard of, but he's now one of the fastest swimmers in the country because he outworked people. He was a guy who wasn't recruited out of high school by any of the big schools, and now he is a Big Ten champion, goes 51 in the 100 yard breaststroke, and is one of the fastest swimmers out there. That is a success story, and those people inspire me. I have teammates that constantly do things that are incredible, and that are not on the Olympic level, but are huge in our little world, and those types of things inspire me. So on that note, you don't have to be the best in the world, you don't have to be an Olympian, you don't have to qualify for nationals, but if you're making strides and improving and doing things that people don't necessarily expect of you, then that's inspiring to me, and I hope that people take that away from this. And on that note, I'm gonna end this, this, uh, this Q&A. Um, if you didn't get your question answered, keep sending in those questions, I'll try to get to a lot of them. I got over a thousand questions within the last 24 hours, so there's no way I can get through all of them, but I'll keep trying. Um, I'm gonna go get on this plane. I think I'll do another Q&A video when I get to the hotel if I've got some time to go. Um, but until next time, see you guys.